The views and opinions expressed here on Wrestling Wind Down are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any other agency, organization, employer, or company. What's up, guys? It's Lo, and you are tuned in to Wrestling Wind Down, a female founded and hosted podcast dedicated to professional wrestling and our favorite adult beverage. It's been a while, but we are back with another episode of Chardonnay and Cheese May, your ultimate wrestling girl talk as always i am joined by iridian fiero of the rest friends podcast and honey we have plenty to spill the wine on i flew out to chicago for all out weekend my first one at that we are discussing everything and anything that happened that weekend including rampage gcw fan fest and of course the big pay-per-view all out and it wouldn't be an all out wrap up if we did not talk about the media scrum heard around the world world from muffins to biting to cult cabana yeah a lot happened and we're covering it all so grab your glass of wine we're going in for the three count We are back with another episode of Chardonnay and Cheese May. We have not been here since July 17th. It seems like it's been decades. We've seen each other in person, but we haven't talked to the people. How are you, Iridian? I am doing so well. It has been forever, but you were in Chicago. We partied up. We had a good time. And now we're back for some cheese may, some Chardonnay and Cheese May, which is going to be hot. <laughs> yes. Before we even begin, it is Hispanic Heritage Month. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month. We always talk about the rest friends on here, but tell us about the podcast. Tell us what you guys are doing. Tell us what's coming up, what people can look forward to. Oh my God. So the rest friends podcast is a podcast hosted by me and my cousin, Teddy, who are two Mexican women. And we talk about everything in regards to wrestling. Again, you know, the chisme, we do a little bit of interviewing and we just started our interview series, which I'm very excited about because one of the first ones is Hyan, who you and I saw together and we loved her so much. And she just made an appearance on Impact a while ago. So she is just amazing and she's incredible. And I'm super excited to see who else we're going to interview. You know, we're thinking about some other people. So keep that in mind, guys. And you can listen to us on Spotify and head over to Twitter because our link tree has all of that information. So I'm super excited about that. And to all of the Mexicans and all the Latinos watching, happy Hispanic Heritage Month as well. Let's talk about All Out Weekend. So we will start here and then we will kind of progress. We will take the people along chronologically because that's what's best. So I flew out to Chicago for All Out Weekend. It was my first All Out Weekend. We started Thursday. We went to an AAW show. Um, We saw Jake something. So this was actually pretty cool because this was the first time that I've seen Jake in person since I designed a shirt for him that is exclusively on pro wrestling tees. Um, But he won the AAW championship while we were there. Um, What were your thoughts on the entire show as a whole? It was crazy because even you telling me that you designed something for him, insane, which congratulations, props to you. And Jake was super excited to see us at the show. So he's great. 10 out of 10 guy. Yes. Um, That show was so much fun. And the fact that we got to all be there together, I think was great because you guys flew in, you and Casey, shout out to Casey. Um, You guys flew in Wednesday night. So we had... A great time there and then Thursday was just fantastic but um you seeing Jake after designing for him what was that like I want to know from you he's very nice he's very polite with his fans I think a lot of the women are starting to get into Jake so I think he's kind of just trying to navigate that um because the girlies love them some Jake something okay but you know he's a great performer I think he was very nice he took the pictures with us he signed the autographs like it's so crazy because Casey said this she's like the voice that he uses when he talks to us as fans versus what he does in like his promos in the ring are like completely different, which is right. His yeah. voice, when you talk to him as a fan, like doing a meet and greet, it's a little bit tamer. And mm-hmm. then you get in the ring and it's like, oh, but obviously they have to hype themselves up and really hype up the crowd. So I understand it. But I mean, it was a great opportunity to be able to design something for him because I've said it before, like, I think a lot of wrestlers tend to get designs on their shirts that only cater to men. 
Um, but he did like that shirt that you bedazzled. So Iridium bedazzled his something shirt. So all it says is something, and she just bedazzled mm-hmm. the text on that. He was like, I love that. So we need to mail him one. That's do. what I gathered from that. And now that he's champion, I feel like it will fit the attire better. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I do want to add one thing about that show. So I actually want to add a couple things about the show. One, I don't know what it is about these Chicago venues, but they need air conditioning. Like, I don't know what y'all are doing out there, but like AC is a necessity. I know it gets cold in the winter, like it snows, it's cold, but just hot in September. Um, It was warm. I don't know what it is. I mean, that's that's a very old, iconic theater. It's the Logan Square uh, Auditorium. And... Sometimes it's not an issue, but it was very, very packed in that um, auditorium. And it's it's very small. So I, I, I'm just going to attribute it to that. I had my mini fan on me. So we were blowing away all the, the smells and whatever else was happening because it was very, very hot. And I'm glad that when we got to get water, you know, we were at least able to breathe a little bit because people were shifting around and not seated in one place. But also we had seats and we were stuck in between like a couple rows in front of us, the stage and then rows in back of us. So also maybe that could have taken, like maybe that's why we were so hot, but I yes, air conditioning. They had one little fan going. <laughs> they did, the little fan I could. The men behind us, um, I would recommend to never go to a wrestling show again. You were extremely rude. And the guy that was directly behind me, his foot was so close to my head. I thought if I backed up a little bit, my head was going to be on his foot. I told Casey numerous times, I was like, be careful because his foot is right there. And then there was another guy. So this performer came out. His name is Nate Webb. He comes out to Teenage Dirtbag, which has been stuck in my head for the last two days. Finally, we got over the f- Ozzy Open theme song. Nate Webb comes out, he goes through the crowd and he kind of does his thing. And there was a specific guy that was sitting in the the bleachers behind us, the area, the risen area. And Nate Webb put his hand out. And I have this on video, put his hand out so that the guy could like lift him up onto the um, riser area. And the guy kind of like went forward and then sat back and just stared at him as all the other people helped. So like I said, just stay the f*** home. I mean, you are coming to a wrestling show, right? And even if you don't like this guy or whatever the case may be, like if he's asking for a hand, like why not just do it or not just be an a- Like it was just really weird. And the fact that these men were also heckling like the whole show, they were saying very, very inappropriate things. Like we would never chant like things that we wish badly upon wrestling. it was very personal like <laughs> it someone like, pissed in oh their coffee God. in the morning and yeah mom and this and this they're just like sir relax it's not that serious it's wrestling relax like, <laughs> and then and we then kept turning one and to look at each other to see like are you hearing this this is insane there was one guy who like I don't know what was going on. I don't know what area he was in, but like he took a picture when Maria Canellas came out and I guess the flash was on and someone was like, if you're going to be a creep, make sure the flash isn't on, which I appreciate the comment. I agree. Also, like, are you okay? Why are you taking a picture of this woman's ass? Sometimes I just shake my head when I hear stuff at these events because I'm like, dude, you are literally outside of your basement. Like you need to know how to interact with A, other wrestling fans, B, women, and C, wrestlers. Like you can't act like you've never been around people before in a public setting. And you know what's crazy is that that wasn't the only time that we experienced that in the weekends, but we will talk about that later. (laughs) I do want to shout out Top Rope Baking. So they are a female founded baking company. So they make like wrestling cookies and stuff like that. And I've interacted with the founder before. And she so graciously gave me wrestling wind down cookies. And I was emotional. It's just so sweet. So thank you again for giving me those cookies. They were so delicious. Thank you. We will clap for her. Applause. So that's how we kicked off all out weekend on that Thursday. And then Friday, um, we went to Rampage. Mm -hmm. We were very close to the ring, had a great time. It was such a good time. And the floor seats that we had, we were in section D right in front of the ring uh, about, I want to say eight or nine rows uh, down, but we were literally so close. We were super excited. We're like, oh my God, we can see everything. We're so excited. 
And we just had a very, very fun time. It was when we got to be all together, you, me, Casey, Teddy, Mario from the Lucha Outsiders and uh, Teddy's husband, Sergio. So we were all in the same row. It was just a fun time. We were all drinking. It was a one hour, I think it's like a one hour show, but there was, they recorded something before it. I think. It's yeah, they recorded far. dark. Yeah. yeah. And that had some very good matches as well. We saw a lot of good talent right off the bat. And that just made us so much more hype for the show. I do want to talk about this one girl who was in front of us and she had a sign. You know who I'm talking about. This girl had a huge sign and literally everyone was yelling at her to put the sign down and she would like turn back and like tell her person like, I don't care. And then move on about her day. And honestly, no one's ever going to see your sign. Like you have to position it very specific like and right. you literally have to have them in front of you and then put the sign up because other than that they're not going to see the sign right so I see no points to signs but there was a lot of signs throughout the weekend so there sure was <laughs> you know I think we need to have like a sign etiquette class like I'm not sure if we could do that on like Ticketmaster or AXS mm -hmm. when we buy the tickets but like common courtesy needs to be had when you go to wrestling events like if you are in the first row or something like that and you have a big ass sign and there's people behind you you have to assume that people are going to get irritated after a while you can't just assume like oh well i bought my seat i'm gonna bring my sign and i'm gonna hold it up for the entire three hours show like that is not gonna happen like iridian said she was a little bit sassy i think she stopped putting it up at some point because i think someone yelled at her but like she got scared <laughs> we have to be kind to each other in terms of caring about others like that's simple to just be like oh f i'm bringing this big sign like i wonder if the people behind me can see mm -hmm. oh, i don't give a f i'm just gonna bring it anyway why why what is the reason but other than that it was a great show and we saw a lot of loose ends tied before all out so i really enjoyed that and then so rampage ended and we got to see nicole yes. nakamura and her this sister was first, yes and the, her sister this is the first time that we all saw each other and the pictures beautiful because it was just amazing I feel like we were all super emotional to meet the both of them because they are so great and they've been so nice to us and we've only really talked on the internet so the fact that we were all able to be together it was just such a good moment and I know Nicole's sister was taking moments of each and every one of us hugging her so it was just great. And I loved it. And we made friends with the security guard who was taking the pictures of us. So it was just so good. And then we still had more wrestling after that. This is where my complaint with air conditioning comes in. We pull up to a GCW show and it's in like a soccer field. Mind you, this is no longer in Chicago. These venues were away from Chicago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hoffman Estates. Mm -hmm. So Tony, it's not Chicago. It's Hoffman Estates. We go to this GCW show and I have been warned online like, hey, it's hot in these venues. Like you might want to bring a fan or be prepared. And I'm like, oh, I live in Las Vegas. I got this. When I tell you this venue that they had GCW at, I don't know what food they were serving, but don't serve it again. Because that in combination with the humidity and the hotness of the venue made me want to just leave. The show is great, don't get me wrong, but when you're in like a hot space for so long, you're like, holy f is this over already? What even happened at that show? We saw Marco Stunt get thrown so many times. Yes. Mike Bailey did kicks going down the aisle to get in the ring. Which was iconic. John Moxley showed up. Yes. With Nick Gage. I There was just so much going on. And honestly, I'm gonna say it wasn't as bad as it could have been because we found a space that was like next to a garage door that was propped open. So we did get a little bit of a breeze, but oh my goodness, when we first walked in and, and Top Rope Bakery was there, we were sweating, yes. sweating. And we had literally just walked in and we had seats to this. So we didn't even sit in our seats because we're like, no, it's honestly too hot. And to be around all of those people, let's just find this little area that we're at and just stay there. And that's where we were the most comfortable. But we did go up to see Mike Bailey do all of his kicks, which was iconic. I had never seen him do that ever. So that was so funny to me, but it's like, it makes sense. 
I thought Joey Janela and Ernest Miller had a good match. There were a lot of good matches. The last match that was on the card was like a, a scramble between Black Label Pro and, uh, and GCW. GCW. And Joshua Bishop, this message is for you. Why are you so angry? Why did you almost kick chairs into us? We were scared. Not twice. really, but like twice. You kicked twice, chairs into sir. us twice. And we're like, damn, this man must be angry. Like, is it the heat? Are you hungry? Like, I you know what? the water. And you know what? I was more offended because it, out of everywhere that he could have kicked the chairs, we were the only girls in that one section and he literally kicked the chairs towards us. It was just one time and then we're like, sir. And he came back to do it again. I'm confused. I was confused a lot that night. If he um, wants to fight, we can fight. The girlies are tussling. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um. The security at this GCW event needs to go to jail. <laughs> I'm going to give you two instances. Okay, so I was sitting down in the turf area and the security guard comes and stands directly in front of me, like not on the side of me, directly in front of me. And I was like very confused. I think Casey has it in her recap video. I was just like vividly confused. So I just stood up next to him and stood exactly how he did with his hands crossed. And then he walked away. Um, And then the second one was even weirder. Like, I kind of feel like I maybe should have shared this on social media before we talked about it right now because it really rubbed me the wrong way. But I had bought a shirt from the GCW merch table and they asked me if I wanted a bag. And I said, yes, because I don't want my shirt sitting on the ground. I brought like a small clear bag, whatever. So I had the black bag. We're probably three fourths of the way down with the show. And this man comes up to me. He has no security shirt on and he asked to search my bag. And I was like, first of all he came up to me and he was speaking Spanish I don't speak Spanish so I was I go over to Aridi and I was like this man is trying to talk to me and I don't know what he's saying so then he's like I need to check your bag I need to check your bag and all of us are looking confused because we're like what the fuck is going on Mm -hmm. so I was like there's only a shirt in here he's like well I have to see it so I open the bag and he's like okay thank you and he walks away and I all of us are just kind of like what's going on what just happened And it rubbed me the wrong way because there were other people walking around with bags and stuff like that. And I don't know where this man came from. He looked like he was just like kicking it with everybody else. And he just came and searched my bag. It was very weird. But there's a second part to that, which happened the next night, which we'll get to. We leave. We do our thing. McDonald's never seen the same people three plus times in the same weekend. I swear to God, we kept going to McDonald's for their McChickens and their chicken nuggets and all types of stuff because that was the only thing open at that time of night. Mm-hmm. Saturday was Fan Fest. What? At Hoffman fan- Estates. At Hoffman Estates. Honestly, we lost a lot of time, a lot of valuable time. I think that we could have been doing other things and watching other wrestling shows, but getting to Hoffman Estates from my house was a solid 45. 40- 45 minutes, sometimes longer. So that alone to drive there and drive back, what a process. I'm glad we were all together because I mean, it didn't feel like a long time because we would gossip about everything that happened on the car ride there and, and back. But oh my goodness, what a great experience Fan Fest was. I, I'm still thinking about it today. So you met Yuda, we met Claudio together, and then you met Ricky Starks, and you met uh, Powerhouse Hobbs, and then Casey met House of Black, Mario met uh, Met uh, Ruby Riot and Athena. Yeah, and then uh, I met obviously met Claudio, and I met Wardlow. I feel like this is what the people have been asking for other than an interview, so this is the best thing that I could do for now. The people wanted it, and honestly... Us as your posse, we also were very excited to see it. The Yuta meet and greet and the Wardlow meet and greet were at the same time. So we had to split up, but I met you up after Yuta's meet and greet and we were very excited. I remember Mario was just talking about it. He's like, oh my God, it's going to happen. And it was just incredible because not only were all five of us in line, not to meet Wardlow, but to see you meet Wardlow. <laughs> He was very nice. I probably will never share the whole video because I don't know. I mean, personal. Yeah, I think I think a lot of the times a lot of people are so quick to share things. But like I've been designing shirts. I've been a fan of him. And, you know, this is probably something that I'll probably keep to myself. There's a couple little things that I might clip here and there to show people. But 
you know, he was extremely nice. I gave him a War Daddy shirt. I gave him a um, Powerbomb Symphony shirt. He appreciated them. So that's all I can ask for other than an interview, Wardlow. But yeah, I mean, I thought that the Fan Fest experience could have been a little bit better in terms of things other than the meet and greet. Like, I yeah. think that's because we've gone to WrestleMania Access and seen the different installations that they have, like the little tattoo parlor, the big shop that they have, the exhibits and stuff like that. I, they had some of that there with like the action figures and the little panel on stage, but it wasn't as interactive as a WrestleMania access or fan shop. I feel like, you know what? I was talking to Mario about this because as soon as we walked in, I was like, Oh, this is it. And he heard me and he's like, what? And I'm like, well, Teddy and I go to see 2 e every year. So it's not like it was a convention. It wasn't set up like a convention. It was just a big room really. And you and I have experienced WrestleMania access. So of course that's like on such a massive scale, but um, FanFest being smaller, I feel like they could have just done a little bit more with it because if you didn't buy a meet and greet, then all you really were there to do was just go to a panel. Or do the free meet and greets. Or do the free meet and greets, which you didn't know who was going to be there. So you basically had to stay there all day and there was nowhere else for you to sit unless you were facing the stage so or or eating which was very which was hidden away kind of like people didn't even know that there was food being given um and also one of the things that I had a problem with was that as soon as we walked in we just went straight to the meet and greets because we didn't know that you had to check in Mm -hmm. because there was no sign when you walked in you literally it was facing backwards so if it was facing when people walked in at the entrance, people would have known that you had to check in. So we just went in, we got in line and they're like, um, ladies go back. Cause you have to get your stuff. Well, it was Casey who told us. So. And thankfully the lines weren't that long at that point. So it was like, okay, we'll go get our little check-in thing and then go back to the line. But when I was meeting Wardlow, there was this lady in the front of me. She was like two people in front of me and she was disabled. And She had stood in the line for a long time and she got to the front and she didn't have her sign in thing and they ended up taking her anyway, which I was glad they did because you haven't communicated that you need a certain ticket to meet these people and you have people, whether, you know, it's children or people that are disabled or, you know, they have different circumstances. You can't expect them to just jump out of line and go to the check in table and come back. Um, So I'm glad that they accommodated that lady, but I feel like they wouldn't have been a problem if they would have been clear with, Hey, you need to go to this table first. And then you go to your lines. And also they had us purchase the tickets online and you got a QR code. So we just thought that, Oh, they're just going to scan the code when we get up there, which is what they did at, um, at WrestleCon. So maybe this is another learning thing. Just put the sign facing the other way or just have the QR codes because honestly it was like a little business card with the name of the wrestler that you were going to meet and they would just take it. Yeah. So I don't know what like the big deal was. Hoopla was, was, yeah. Well, yeah, hoopla. I don't know what it was. So then after that, we went to another GCW event with no air conditioning. That one was crazy too. I mean, that one was even crazier than the night before. Like, you know, we're fairly new to death matches and stuff like that, but like, holy that you know what? thing like I had never seen before everyone was bleeding in the main event people had told us that it was going to be like nothing we've ever experienced and I mean I f- I feel like I was mentally prepared for it but at a certain point I feel like I just became numb to everything and I like blacked out I just I don't even remember they were jumping I, I off a structure that was not in the ring to go into the ring like I do remember that I remember Alley Cat up there I do insane there was so many people she will never go back i'm so sorry casey that we (laughs) took you i'm sorry that i took myself it was also very very hot and it was more hot than it was the night before because this was deeper into that same arena and there was no doors no garage doors no air well someone also said that the reason why they couldn't run an ac was because they have a certain type of light in that Mm -hmm. arena yes so it was because um of the the lights that they were going to be breaking so if you had a fan then that would scatter all of the the shatterings of the light into the turf and they did not want that 
which mm-hmm. I get, I completely get. So if you had, if you were first or second row, people were also wearing masks as to not inhale everything, which is smart on them. But also if you're sitting first and second row, I don't know. You live for this. You let you live in you. Yeah. I don't, not for me. Not for me. Yeah. That show was way wilder than the first show. I mean, if I were to go back and do it again, I probably would have gone home at a reasonable hour on the Saturday and not gone to that because it was just, it was insane. Honestly, I feel like a good ending point would have been when the girls did their kind of death match. Yes. Um, Charlie Evans and Sawyer. I yeah. Believe. I think that would have been great. Like that ending would have been like, wow, that was crazy. Okay, we can go. <laughs> right. Because I mean, that main event, I was like, and then when we were leaving, we saw uh, paramedics coming and I'm like, what is going on? When we saw one ambulance, we we're like, oh my God, this is not good. Like after what we just saw, someone is definitely not okay. And then the second ambulance came and we were like, okay, this is serious. Like very, very serious. I was scared for the we wrestlers have, because we, we forgot paid something. our ticket. What? We went to Fat Rosie's. Oh my God. <laughs> if you are ever in the Hoffman Estates area and you want some Mexican food and margaritas, please go to Fat Rosie's. Okay, so I had found this when we were in Target and I was kind of like, oh, like the review, the first review I saw wasn't good, Frank. And I was like, I don't know if we should go or not. And I was like, oh, whatever, we'll just try it. So we pull up, there's no line, we go in, and we didn't know what to expect. Our waiter kind of gave off D-bag vibes at first, but then he gives us all sombreros to wear, and we're all like, what the hell is going on? So we're all here for the experience. We've never experienced anything like this before. And then he comes back with a round of shots for free. We were all on such a high because we're like, well, it looks like a cool place. We saw this review and we decided to give a sh- give it a shot. So we were given shots at the restaurant. How exciting! Every everything was just happening so fast because as soon as the food the food came out really quick, our drinks came out quick. They were good. So the and some lady was taking pictures for postcards for free for the free. She was taking free pictures, and then. Each and every one of us got a sombrero. We all got selfies with the waiter. The waiter took a picture with us. It was just incredible. And the food was delicious. And now we feel like it has to be a tradition for next Absolutely. Before um, All Out, we all have to go to Fat Rosie's. Meet us there. Definitely. Then we have Sunday, obviously, All Out. I'm still in shock about MJF. I mean, I shouldn't be, but here's the thing. Somehow, someway, I had very good reception in that arena, and I was online when he first came out in his little creepy mask, and I was like, what's the internet saying? What's Twitter saying? And Miss Cam, I'm going to take your phone away one day. She was like, I know that's MJF. I could tell that ass from anywhere. And I was like, I mean, yeah. But like, then I start scrolling and everybody's like, it's MJF. Did you see that plump booty? I'm like, y'all are some perverts, some very attention to detail perverts. But you were right. Yes. It's really surprising that you had really great service because that arena is known to have terrible service. Because even in the parking lot, when I was trying to load the tickets, it was not letting me. So I said, Jesus, we're, well, we weren't in Chicago. If we were in Chicago, we would have had reception. Just saying. Mm. I know that's right. Tony Khan. I'm so tired of him saying Chicago all out. Just put Hoffman and Stace on there. Call it a day. The show was really good, though. I thought there were so many good matches. Um, it just it felt like a good time. Um, it felt like a good time until a person in front of us would not shut up. Literally, I just felt so disrespected. And especially during the women's match, because he had a lot to say during this women's match. And I'm tired of him. I was tired of him, especially Britt Baker did like a, she did like a curb stomp. I, yeah. I don't know what it's called, but like, he was like, oh, Seth Rollins. Oh, I love Seth Rollins. Oh, swing blade. Oh, like it was just terrible. This man was like on his fifth drink and he would not shut up. Yeah, he kept on. And you know what? Miss Casey over the moon saw she had had enough. And here's the thing. Like I just said minutes ago, 
we need to be more considerate when we go to wrestling shows. Like, I understand that, you know, wrestlers do the same moves or whatever, but like this man was trying to get a reaction out of people and he kept on and he kept on and he kept on. And going to a show, you're paying your money, you're trying to have a good time. And it's like, you keep yelling the same thing over and over. Your friends don't want to be there with you. They look like they're ashamed to be there. And then when someone finally is like, can you stop? And you're like, I think it's funny. Like, you want to be an a- you're going to get told how it is. He was, I don't understand what was wrong with him. Like, I just, I didn't have anything to say to him. I felt like y'all had it handled because he was getting on my last f-ing nerve and he was sitting right in the front of me. I'm so confused as to why every time I go to a big wrestling event, there's always some man that is doing something stupid and it ruins part of the experience somehow yeah and during this women's match all of the men decided to take their bathroom break oh my god pisses me off because men are so sexist and they'll say so many comments about the women and you want to say oh well i'm such a huge fan of women supporters and oh this is my favorite you know i love the women uh, when they wrestle but like no you don't because you don't support women's wrestling because you literally chose right now it could have been any other time to take a bathroom break but you're going to do it now during the women's match and it didn't just happen at all out we've seen it happen at other places too so it just irritates me so that's why i took my bathroom break during the tag team match yeah i had noticed that as well i was just kind of taking a look around and i saw all of these men getting up from their seats when the uh, title match came on the first title match with athena and jade and that rubbed me the wrong way and that's when i had tweeted about it and i had people saying well tony khan said that women don't draw i'm telling you what i saw at this arena okay and then i had someone like we're like oh well that's not how it goes we literally saw it with our own eyes like you saw it in the videos in the videos it looked worse yes like, Jesus. It looked worse. And there were other people that were there that also said the same thing. So it's not like we just got in a little group together by the vodka lemonade stand and, and we were decided like, that we were going to say something online. No, this was actually happening. And it's disappointing because these women, they go out there and they bust their ass just as hard or even harder than the men. And exactly. they're still not given the same respect, you know, and it pisses me off. I thought both of the matches were really good. And you know what? It's their loss if they decide to go to the bathroom or go f- outside and smoke because they didn't want to see the women wrestle your f-ing laws henry but other than that i mean when mjf came out here's the thing we knew it was probably going to happen on the same show so we were kind of just waiting for it after punk one which was very interesting how the crowd reacted for punk and moxley like Let that reaction was oh my f- God, I have some strong feelings about this match because of everything that perspired afterwards, right? But I was very upset that Mox did not retain this championship because everyone who was cheering for CM Punk was in line at FanFest to get an autograph and picture from John Moxley. It's who okay. Was they, at Fan it's Fest. okay. They paid him two, three hundred dollars. He he won two hundred dollars for these meet and greets, but CM Punk was not there. CM Punk was at C two E two. I don't know. I don't know. But these fake fans were out here cheering for CM Punk. I am from Chicago and I love CM Punk, but the Chicago promo was a little too much Chicago and they were selling Chicago hard at Hoffman Estates. I can't, I can't. And then for you to take the championship off of John Moxley, who came out with William Regal, who we love Mr. William Regal here on both podcasts and just the disrespect. I feel like you guys just disrespected John Moxley by taking that championship title off of him. And then CM Punk to go and act a fool at the press conference next to Tony Khan Girl. Also acting a fool. Let's talk Girl. about, the, let's talk about the media scrum. Okay. This media scrum. So everybody and their mom knows about this. I'm just shocked about a couple things. One, I'm shocked that Tony Khan sat there and did not tell him to relax or calm down. Like that mm-hmm. had me floored. I've watched the clips numerous times. And I'm just so shocked at how Tony handled himself. He just did not tell Punk at any point, like, hey, you need to just relax about your coworkers. He didn't say anything. Like, Punk just went off. He just went off on a tangent. Now, I have no problem with people airing their grievances or whatever, but when you start talking about people's moms, that's what is crossing the line for me. And honestly, if you were going to do it, do it on your own time. Don't do it on the company's watch, the hand that's feeding you. And the fact that Tony did intervene one time and he's like, oh, I'm sorry that I did it. And then CM Punk was like, no, 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 no. I got this. I'll finish the conversation. It was just like a show. (laughs) 
and so, we watched it back home and we were he kept saying things so i read and they're saying that the interviewer that brought up Colt Cabana or the guy has asked about Colt Cabana before and I guess CM Punk had finally just had enough so he wanted to air everything out on the table you just won one of the biggest championships in professional wrestling and Colt Cabana is living rent free in your mind to bring him up during the media scrum now I like Colt Cabana please go watch his streams on Twitch but this was not the time and you're talking about his mother and him sharing a bank account with his mother and how you were paying his bills and this and that how is that relevant to you just winning a championship from John Moxley? It's not. And then you eat enough muffin up there. I hope that lady made a payday off those muffins. I know I was gone and she's closed Monday through Wednesday, so I couldn't get a muffin. But I hope she made a payday after that because, girl, he was up there chewing, smacking and licking his lips for that muffin. Did you see that fans started commenting and leaving Yelp reviews? Yes on the bakery that were like oh my god something something like Cole Cabana or I, at least I can buy this now because I share a bank account with my mother like the trolling that was going on amazing amazing after all of that you know there were other different people that were on the scrum the thing that caught people's attention during the rest of this scrum was a security guard who yes. bolted out of the room to go to the back we had no idea what was going on at this point. We're seeing reports online from Sean Ross Sapp and other people that there's been a backstage altercation. So we're kind of like, what's going on? Yeah. Now, since then, we know everything. CM Punk got into a physical altercation with the Young Bucks. Kenny tried to pull away CM Punk's dog and this a dude bit him. What's his name? Ace Steel? Ace Steel bit okay. him on the arm. What are we doing? Or, and even, okay, and before this happened, CM Punk was talking shit about Hangman. <laughs> yes, he talked about Hangman and he talked about Cole Cabana and he talked about the EVPs. He and was he talking shit about everybody. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, everyone's fair game. And he said, oh, you guys can come talk to me. My door's open. And he went backstage and locked his door. And guess what? That blew open. Honestly, I feel like the Young Bucks are justified in like they probably just wanted to go and say like what the fuck is up kyle and punk was like no i'm not here for it but how are you going to be not man enough to own up to what you said you like everything has a consequence you can't just go and talk he didn't even try to justify anything try to have a conversation with the bucks and this crazy ass man who I don't know if he has rabies. He Kenny needs to go get checked because you can't just go out here biting people. This is not The Walking Dead. I'm I just confused. don't understand what what was necessary to bite someone. He was trying to help the dog so the dog didn't get hurt and you decided that you should bite him? Like, he needs to be gone. I know and a lot of people have been saying- throwing? Girl. A lot of people are really up in arms about these suspensions. There was some suspensions that have already ended. Like, I think Christopher Daniels was suspended. Mm -hmm. You had Pat Buck who was suspended. Their suspensions are done. Brandon but like, Cutler. Yep, but like the Young Bucks, Kenny, the Biter, and then CM Punk. We don't know when their suspension ends, but I'm going to be completely honest with you. This Ace Steel guy, he's not a performer. He's a backstage person. He needs to f go. You have these performers like CM Punk and the Bucks that are suspended. That's fine. But like you're involving this guy who I believe is like CM Punk's trainer or doctor or something like that, who is getting involved in a physical altercation. If you were out on the street, that would be assault or battery. And I know there was some talk on Twitter about like, oh my God, like don't call it assault, don't call it battery. It is though. Someone was assaulted backstage. This is not a WWE or an AEW sanctioned match. These were backstage tussling. Let's call it what it is. Like really, really fighting. And I get it that Tony was like, okay, well, I'm going to hold them accountable and I'm going to strip them of their titles. But I honestly believe that CM Punk should have been fired. And a lot of people are going to be mad at me because I, I'm saying this, but there is no way that in any other profession you can act out like this and not have repercussions like this suspension. And I think if the in injury might be real, injury might not be real, but he's out for like six to eight months. And if it's not real, I'm guessing that their hopes would be that people are going to forget about it. CM Punk is never going to live this down. Never. Okay. People are going to remember this forever. And he should have been released. He should have been released. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. 
I feel like CM Punk is known for his moments where he acts out, though. Have you noticed that? Like, he was known after he left the WWE for his pipe bomb that he did. If he does end up getting released from AEW or he does decide to leave on his own terms, he will be known as the person who was who went on the press scrum and completely just went off and then had a fight backstage. I feel like he is known for these things that where he's acting out. And it's like, at what point are you just kind of like, hey, you know what? I shouldn't be doing this. Like, I need to be known for what I do in the ring. I think CM Punk is an incredible performer. He has had an amazing career, but you have to be known for more than the guy that's always acting out. Like, come on now. And I know a lot of people have said that this whole backstage brawl kind of took away from MJF's moment, Mm -hmm. which... I kind of think is the case, but I also think that MJF doesn't, I don't think he gives a f- MJF is getting paid his money. He's flying to these events, probably on Tony Khan's watch because, hey, he's in a PJ. Does he have a PJ? Probably not. That's private jet. And he just got engaged. So I don't think MJF really gives a f- about what CM Punk is doing, you know, at any juncture. MJF is almost kind of stepping in just like John Moxley because John Moxley was supposed to go on a very extended vacation after this event. Which brings me back to the disrespect that you guys took the championship off of John Moxley, who has been an amazing champion and really been putting in the work while CM Punk has been gone. And for CM Punk to pull this little kid And then now John Moxley is like back in the title picture. You should have just kept the title on him. And now that CM Punk could have lost and still had beef with MJF. It just doesn't make sense. Thank you, Iridium, for joining me. I'm Chardonnay and she's May. Where can the people find you on social media? You can listen to the Rest Friends podcast on Spotify and iTunes and head over to YouTube, uh, Rest Friends, and you can watch all of our amazing videos there. We try to mix it up with content, with reactions, with reviews, and sometimes we do record our podcast episodes and put them up there. But our interview series, every single one of those uh, interviews will be up there. So make sure you check that out. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wrestling Wind Down. You can find all of our other episodes available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and wherever else you listen to your podcast. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCAST. Let us know what you thought about the episode. What was your favorite part? Until next time, enjoy your wine and, of course, enjoy your wrestling. Cheers! Cheers.